breakfast or we have overspent the time and approach the lunch hours time let me try again the lord is good all, the time. all those who came with hands the lord is good all the time, all the time the lord is good. we want to thank the lord for this opportunity that he has given us i want to thank you for the opportunity of god to come Every day in the evening, we could be preaching to buildings and uh, trees here, but thanks a lot. And even those who are welcomed, welcome and feel at the feet of Jesus Christ. Straight away, I want us to go to the message. Of course, you know the theme has been Awake Unto Righteousness. The subtitle this afternoon will be One More Night with frogs. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you because you are merciful. You are patient, long-suffering, waiting for each and every person to reach repentance. If you had dealt with us according to our sins, no one could be alive today. Thank you because you are not pleased with the death of a sinner. As we listen to your word this afternoon, we ask that, dear loving Lord, help us to be alert, sober, vigilant, that your word may find a place in our hearts to change us in your own likeness, and above all, to prepare us for your second coming. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. One more night with frogs. My brothers and sisters, it has been a marathon this week and the week just seemed as few days, two to three days 
and some felt I wish we could go to another week. But I want to tell you that the few things that we have gotten this week may it have a place in our hearts to change us in the likeness of the Lord. In the book of Proverbs chapter 27, which the one which you read, let's go there. Proverbs chapter 27. We're going to read verse 1. The Bible says, I read in two versions. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. I want to tell you that many people are postponing their salvation. Many people are not making decisions today. And the Bible says that if you hear this voice today, do not harden your heart. We have seven days in a week, but if you look, we have three days in a week. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Today is a gift from the Lord. That is why it is called present. Are you going to refuse the present of God today? Some of us are saying tomorrow. The Bible says, you do not know what a day may bring thereof. Let me ask you this question. Who knew the president of Tanzania could die? A religious man who was admired by many for going against the worldly principles. But the Lord allowed him to sleep for a reason. Tomorrow is not ours. Do not boast about it tomorrow. It is today as you hear the word of God. Don't postpone. Postponing or procrastination brings stagnation in our lives. I want us to go to a scripture of uh, the scripture that we are familiar of, familiar of, this man called Pharaoh and the ten plagues. God sent Moses and Aaron to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go and worship me. And Pharaoh said, who is God? There are people who are asking today, who is God? Sincerely, they want God to show him them who he is. God will show them. But there are others who are asking arrogantly, like Pharaoh, who is God? God had an opportunity to show Pharaoh who he was. He brought the first plague in Egypt. And he told Moses and Aaron, stretch your staff and touch the waters. And the waters of Egypt became blood everywhere. And frogs and fish died. And it stunk. Nobody could drink the water. The Bible says that the magicians also did with their sacred acts and made the water to become blood. And the Bible says that they made the heart of Pharaoh to be hardened. My brothers and sisters, you are a church member. When somebody sees you going to a disco, you harden the hearts of people. They, they make Jesus for going to the disco. When they see you watching movies, pornography, they you harden their hearts. If they can pray, if they can preach, if they can carry the Bibles and watch what do we, we are watching, you harden their hearts. And the Bible says that Pharaoh did not take thought of what happened. He turned and went to the palace.
seven days passed by and the Lord removed the plague. The second plague was the plague of frogs. Let's go to Exodus chapter 8 as we get the details of the second plague. The Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may wash, they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, Behold, I will smith all the borders with frogs. The Bible continues to say, And the rivers shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into your bedchamber or bedroom, as the other versions put it, and into thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into the kneading troughs, even among the sufurias and everything in the kitchen. Verse 4. And the frog shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. Before God sends a plague, he sends a warning. Before judgment comes, God will always send warnings and reproofs and correction to give people time. So it goes with this description. The frogs will come everywhere in your bedroom, in your bathrooms, in your kitchen. Do you know how ugly frogs are? Let me tell you, if a rat just runs by mistake in this church, the service will stop. People will jump on top of the seats. Now imagine of a frog, the way ugly it is. Jumping, it can even jump to what? To the seat. Now imagine, that is not only one frog. Frog! Everywhere you want to drink water, frogs in the cup. You want to cook, frogs in the oven. You want to sleep, frogs in bed. Everything came into a standstill in Egypt. It was a national day of frogs. I can hear little children crying, Mommy! I don't want to see this ugly thing. But you knew, you know, they could not kill the frogs. Why? Frogs were sacred beings in Egypt. There is a goddess who was called Heka, depicted by the head of the frog. They believed that frogs were gods. In the desert, when people were going all over, they could locate where the water is by hearing the sound of the frogs. The gods were calling them, come and drink. It was believed Heka, the, the goddess who was depicted with the frog, provided fertility for women in Egypt. So they could not kill it. Frogs were everywhere. But you know what? When things hit the wall, people turn to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, let's go to that Exodus chapter 8 as we move on. Verse 5 says, then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the streams and the canals and the ponds and make frogs come up on the land 
of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did with the, their with, did the same things with their sec, sacred, sacred acts. They also made the frogs up on the land of Egypt. My brothers and sisters, we are living at the age. We are living at the brink of Jesus Christ coming. He said there will be very many false prophets who will come at the end before, before he comes. Many shall rise. Many false prophets will come. The Bible says that the devil can even perform a miracle of fire coming from heaven and deceive many. We have many televangelists who are performing miracles and claiming that miracles are from the power of God. How much more are we supposed to be vigilant? The same miracles that God performed in Egypt, the magicians, the soothsayers, they did it with their sacred acts. The Bible continues to say, you know, when they tried to remove them, they could not remove them. And the Bible says in verse 8, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to take away the frogs from me and my people, and I will let your people to go and sacrifice to the Lord. This is what I call submission under compassion. He asks for prayers when he has reached a dead end. I have nothing to do. When God speaks to us in soft language, we, we don't want to hear. But when it becomes into extreme, we are asking for prayer. Pray for me. Submission under compulsion. Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh, I leave the opportunity for you and your officials to decide when do you want me to pray for you? Guess what? The Bible says tomorrow. You will think that Pharaoh and the people of Egypt were tired of the frogs because everything came to a standstill. They could not do anything. Factories could not manufacture because frogs were everywhere. So he said tomorrow, one more night with the frogs and then you'll pray for me. Somebody is saying, is this man crazy? I have no time of postponing things until tomorrow. I want these things to get out of my life immediately. Now, what do you mean, Moses, by telling me, telling me that you give me time? I want you to remove, pray that God may remove these things today. But he says tomorrow, one more night with frogs. Let me tell you something from the scriptures. If you read all the places where in the book of Exodus concerning about the plagues, everywhere it is written tomorrow, it has a connection with God. We may not have time to read all the verses, but read them down, uh, write them down so that I will explain as we move on. Exodus chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Exodus chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. Exodus chapter 8, verse 23 to 29 there. Then uh, Exodus chapter 9, verse 5 and verse 18. Lastly, 
Exodus chapter 10, verse 4. If you read at these verses, God sends a warning and he tells Moses and Aaron to tell Pharaoh, tomorrow I'm going to bring the plague. Why is God saying tomorrow? God is giving us time to make up our mind. But when, the, when God says tomorrow, it is our opportunity to make a decision today. But this man says tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, why are you not baptized today? Why have you not made a decision to be saved? It is because you are saying tomorrow. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you not know what a day may bring there of. Last year I got an accident. We nearly died on the road. Maybe today I could be manure somewhere else. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that do not boast about tomorrow. If you hear this voice, do not harden your heart. Make a decision today. Pharaoh is saying that Moses let me have a good time with the frogs tonight and then pray tomorrow that the frogs may be taken. Yes, pastor, I've heard you preach. Let me finish my packet of condoms and then I'll stop. Let me finish my packet of cigarettes. Let me finish the pitous the pills, and then I will stop. Do you know something worse will happen? When we are talking about Samson, we said, stop sinning or something worse will happen. As you sit and listen, what could make a man who has asked for prayers because he is in a dire situation to say tomorrow. We are famous of what is going to happen tomorrow. Don't postpone what is supposed to be done today for tomorrow. Let me give around two or three reasons what could make this man to say, because we don't have time, there is there's something I want us to, to, to look at. I'll give two, three. There are many reasons why people postpone that procrastination brings stagnation. But I want us to look at why will this man say that tomorrow? Why? He has asked for prayers, but why is he ask, saying tomorrow? Let me tell you. One, pain is pain. I mean, change is painful. When God comes into your life, He will interfere with your relationship. When God comes into your life, He is going to stir the waters that are come. Yesterday we saw Jesus, God telling. Uh, uh, as Jonah, arise. When the word of God comes, it finds us in our comfortable position. Remember, the captain of the mariners in the sea came and told Jonah the same words that God told him. Arise! Change is painful. 
This is the man who is paying for my rent. He does shopping. If I give my life to Jesus Christ, who will pay for my rent? Who will do for my shopping? Change is painful, my brothers and sisters. And that is why Jesus Christ said that if your right eye, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. It's painful. And since it is painful, people see, I cannot endure this pain. Let me have it one more night with frogs. Let me tell you, give up all these things for the sake of Jesus Christ. I was in Kisumu, in one of the churches that I cannot be able to mention. I met this lady. She told me that she's living with somebody. She's a youth. This person is providing everything and she had two kids from different fathers. So he, she told me that you have preached well. But how can I go? How can I survive? I told her, I don't know. Take the step of faith and cut that relationship. For this is a man who is married. We prayed. She called the man and said, it's over. She had two interviews that week. The first interview she flopped. The second interview, which was of a certain, uh, uh, a certain uh, supermarket that had just come in that city. She was taken. At that time, she was uh, 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 mending clothes and she was being paid 4,000. She was taken to that supermarket and she began to earn 32,000 shillings. She told me, Nimrod, my first salary will go to God, all of it. It's two years that have passed. The first salary did not go to Jesus. That's how we are. I don't know how you are going to survive by cutting the wrong means in your life. Take the first step, the second step, Jesus will begin to walk with you. Amen? Change is painful. That is why people don't want to invite Jesus Christ in their lives. Let me tell you another thing. You will even find that somebody hates the way he drinks. He falls down. He hates it. But in the morning, he still goes back to eat because he feels that it removes stress. It can suspend stress when the effects of drinking are gone. The problem is still there. Why can't you go to Jesus Christ who is the problem solver? Jesus Christ will put enmity between you and drinking and give you power to overcome it. Change is painful. Another thing why people don't want, people are postponing, they are waiting for a day of perfection. Let me tell you, if you are waiting to be in a good position before you pray, let me tell you, you reach hell before you pray. Let me stop drinking. Let me stop immorality. Let me stop this and then I'll come to Jesus Christ. Who told you that you can? Paul said,
says that I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. And we are in a position where we say, I can do it by myself. Or I can do it with the help of somebody. Waiting for a perfect moment. When Jesus Christ was explaining uh, a parable of the, of, of the seed and the, 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 the people who came to the master and said that, can we go and remove the tears? And the master told them, let the wheat and the tears grow together until harvest time. My brothers and sisters, here in church, there, is, there are tears and wheat. You will find drunkards, immoral people in church, people with temper, people who are greedy. You will find them because Jesus Christ said, let the wheat and the tares grow together until harvest time. The tares that are inside here today, they will hear the message and respond. It's only Jesus who has the power to change the tear into a wheat. And he says that if you think you are standing, watch lest you fall. If you are a witch, you need to pray very much because you might change from witch to what? Filters. Don't wait for a perfect opportunity to come. To stop everything and come to Jesus Christ. You come to Jesus, he gives you power to stop that perfect opportunity will never come as you are fighting outside there. Jesus wants you to come. Another reason, maybe this could be the last as we move on because of time. And believe. There are people who don't even believe the word of God. They are just perfectly disobedient. I don't care what that man says at the pulpit. And believe. And the Bible says, actually somewhere, I don't know, maybe I've lost the scripture. Somewhere in the book of Hebrews says, because of unbelief, they did not enter into the land. Talking about the Israelites. The Bible says that, no, the commentators say that when they got out of Egypt, approximately there were 500,000 men. They did not count the children and women. So in total, they say about 2 million people got out of Egypt. Because of unbelief, they died in the desert. Only two people got into the land that God had promised. That was Caleb and Joshua. Unbelief. The opposite of unbelief is faith. People don't have faith. People want to touch. People want to see. People want to smell. We want to use our senses to make a decision. You cannot make a decision by your senses. Yesterday I told you, we have big speakers here. If we want to have things like praise and worship, we can dance and do everything. But I believe in preaching the word of God, which appeals to the, which appeals to the heart. No senses. We can go on and on. But you see, sleeping with frogs, people can get used with sleeping with frogs even if they have devastating effects. People are, are, are playing with frogs. People are keeping frogs like teddy bears. They are protecting the frogs. They are feeding the frogs. If you have one frog, they are going to multiply. Do you know how many eggs the frogs lay? 
How many eggs? They lay very many eggs. A small frog, as you protect, as you protect it, as you feed it, soon it's going to be a big frog in your life. It's going to be an addiction in your life. And addictions are hard to break. Is there a frog at the corner of your life, at the corner of your room, that you are protecting and feeding it? It is one, soon there are going to be two, three, four, until you are addicted of what you are doing. Sin is dangerous. Sin is corrosive. Anything that comes into contact with sin, it will corrode it. Sin is destructive. It has destroyed men and women of God, even those who do not know Jesus Christ. That is why we cannot afford to keep the frogs with us. When the frogs have come, we cannot be able to control them or handle them as they lay, they lay, they lay the eggs and as they hatch. There are frogs which are poisonous. Actually, we are told that these frogs, others, just like a, a, a snake, which will inject venom in us. Perhaps there are people who have been beaten by snakes, spiritual snakes. But this morning, this afternoon, as we look at this one, why could a person say one more night with the frogs? Why could a person say this as we are looking at them? Why? Listen to what the Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. I don't know whether you have ever read this verse. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19. The Bible says in NIV, Your wickedness will punish you. It's not even God. Your wickedness will punish you. Your backslidingness will rebuke you. As you have backslidden, there is conscience inside you, whether you come to church or not. You know very well this is the day of worship. Your backslidingness will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you to forsake the Lord your God, and I have no all for me. Are you listening to the word of God? That is why we are told to awake unto righteousness. And Paul says that I speak this to your shame. We need to awake unto righteousness. Now as we are moving on, why is it dangerous for me and you to say tomorrow? Why is it dangerous for me and you to say one more night with frogs? Here we go, point number one. A day will come when God will give up on you. Let me tell you this. A day is going to come when God will give up on us. The Bible says that 
God told Noah, build an ark. He preached for 120 years. After that, he said, my spirit will not continue to contend with man. You think the spirit of God will keep on contending with us forever? A time is coming when Jesus will say, enough is enough. I'm closing probation. Let me give you verses here concerning about that. Let's go to the, okay, that one which I mentioned, we'll not read it. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. My spirit cannot continue. 3, read 5 and 6. But let's go to the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. <coughs> Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. The Bible says that Ephraim has joined himself with idols. Leave him alone. Ephraim has joined prostitution in MKU. Leave him alone. By the way, yesterday, I sat around this place a little bit before we went for the other mission there. The people who came to this place of worship, A lady with a bikini, that's a band only, protruding every hill and valley of her body. God may be tired and say, leave her alone to her idolatry. It's dangerous. Postponed. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 1. We're going to the book of Romans. <coughs> Romans, chapter 1. I'm going to give you verses in a moment. The Bible says, let's read, this, this phrase is repeated several times, about three times in, uh, uh, in, this, in the book of Romans. Listen to verse 24. <clears throat> Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their bodies between themselves. God can give us up to our lust that we have insisted. In verse 26, this is what the Bible says. Because of this, God gave them over shameful lusts. Do you know the shameful lusts that are there? homosexuality, lesbianism, hom I mean uh, bestiality, and we have masturbation and all shameful lust, immorality, and all that. He gave them over. When you insist, God can give you over to this lust. Verse 28. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. You have the knowledge of movies, of novels, and all that because you thought that it is not worthy to retain the knowledge of God in our hearts. The Bible says, He gave them over to deprived mind. What am I emphasizing, emphasizing this afternoon? That when we insist in doing something, God can say, fine, have it. I'm taking a, a break so that you may think as I also think. If I'm not preaching to anybody, I'm 
preaching to myself this afternoon. Let's look at why is another reason why we should we should not postpone the reason why we should not postpone our conscience can be hardened. When you repeat doing things, you become used to the things. For example, maybe you should you are wearing long dresses, you see everybody's wearing short, 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 short. You get used until to the point where they are up here and you don't see anything wrong. Our conscience can be hardened. In the book of Hebrews, we will not read it because of time. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13. The Bible talks about our conscience hardened. Somewhere else he said that a conscience can be smeared with hot iron that we cannot be able to know what is going on. If you insist that you are sleeping with one more night with frogs, I tell you, the Lord can give you over to those, those things. Your conscience can be hardened. There is a place where we went and found people having sex just on the field and people are passing. Let me tell you, a conscience can be hardened until you do shameful things openly. May God help us not to reach in that position. Why should we not postpone? Because of uncertainty of death. Life is short. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. That is the reality. Life is short. Some of the powerful people in this world or even our country died during the lockdown. Let's go. Okay, you write these three verses down for the sake of time and then we read one of it. Psalms 103 verse 14 to 16. Psalms 103 verse 14 to 16. James chapter 4 verse 13 to 14. James chapter 4 verse 13 to 14. Lastly, Job chapter 14 verse 1 downwards. The Bible says that a man born of a woman is full of trouble and his days on earth are short. There are very many people who are comforting themselves here that I am a youth. Do you know how many parents have buried their children? By nature, we need to bury our parents, but because of disobedience, our parents are burying us. The Bible says we are like a flower. In the morning is there. In the evening is not there. The Bible says we are like mist. When the sun comes, it vanishes. This world is not our home. This is not our permanent places. We are sojourning. We are just passing on this world. Do not postpone your salvation. Do not postpone a decision for Jesus Christ today. For you do not know what will happen tomorrow. The next point. Something worse will happen. Let me tell you my brothers and sisters. This man called Pharaoh kept on bargaining with Moses and Aaron. If you pray for us, the frogs to go, I will let your children, I will let the children of God go. When, when the frogs were, 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 were removed, he did not let the children of Israel go. Again, he says, I have seen this time, pray for me, or ask God to, to do this. God removes the plague, he remains. 
let me tell you, something worse will happen. Let me revisit what we said concerning about Samson. Jesus Christ, they bring a woman caught, the Bible says, in the very act. They bring the woman to Jesus Christ to tempt him. What does the law of Moses say? And the Bible says that uh, Jesus told them, I mean, he wrote something on the ground uh, and each and every person left. When Jesus rose up, he saw nobody. He saw a pile of stones which were there and the rock of ages was Jesus Christ. He says to the woman, where are your accusers? Neither do I condemn you. Listen. This is a punchline. Those who are not specialized, they will always condemn, they will, also, they will always judge and discourage the scribes, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. But the person who is specialized in condemning, in judging, he told the woman, go sin no more. That is the beautiful thing of coming to Jesus Christ. We were born condemned. He does not condemn us. He is, is telling us every day, my son, my daughter, come. Don't you think Jesus had a right to tell this woman after saving her, she could have been stoned to death. Go sin no more. And then he comes and finds a man who had stayed at the pool for 38 years. He heals him. He tells him, he, he goes. Later he finds him in the temple. And he told him, see, you are well or whole. See no more lest something was happen. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, after the frogs were, were removed, the gnats came. After the gnats were removed, the flies, the plague of flies came. After the flies were removed, the plague of livestock came. After the, the plague of livestock was removed, the boils, everybody had boils. After the boils were removed, the hailstones came. After the hailstones went, the locusts came and the second last plague was the plague of darkness. And then the last plague was the plague of death. All Egyptians' firstborns and even the livestock died. Something was will happen. The devil wants us to keep on postponing, postponing so that you may die before making a decision for Jesus Christ. Something worse will happen. My brothers and sisters, are you thinking along with me? Are you waiting for something worse to happen in our lives so that we may be serious? I mean, uh, change is expensive. Just do this for Jesus Christ. We have come to the end of the enriched mission. Let me give a verse concerning about that. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. The Bible says, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved.
the Inrich mission has come to an end. And the tragedy is you are not saved. Which other opportunity are you looking for? We have no guarantee of seeing tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, when things become hard, became harder, Pharaoh's heart was softened. When the plagues were, were removed, Pharaoh resumed to his old habits. How many times have we promised ourselves, I will never do it, I will never go to that place, I will, whatever. And after a short time, we resume to our various things that we used to do. Jesus wants to be a master in your life. Why should we not postpone? We do not know when Jesus Christ will come. Jesus on earth, that is the book of Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Write these three verses. Time is against us. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Write also 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 downward. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Mark says that no one knows the day or the hour. <coughs> Even the angels in heaven except the Father. Nobody knows the day or the hour. The day of the Lord will come as a thief. And Jesus himself will come as a thief. Listen, live as if Jesus died yesterday, he rose today, and he is coming tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, the rest of the things will be able to go on as we move on. I want to talk to somebody at this moment. I talked, I was preaching with one Maasai preacher in a camp meeting. This Maasai preacher told us a story that shook us before they are, those traditions, before they are circumcised, they had to bring 15 cows. And they could come at the borders and steal cows from kisses and all that. At that time, this Maasai had, had, had eight cows and he was striving the rich 15 so that he may be circumcised. An hotel around 12 midnight, he hears things running, he ducks and sees Maasai running with, 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 with the livestock. He began, we, our livestock have been taken. We, our livestock have been taken. And the Maasai told us that they held the tails of the cow and began to hit the, head, the tails of the cow and it made them run very fast. People began to chase them with pangas and torches and clubs and all that. They could not leave everywhere. Ooh -wee, ooh -wee, ooh -wee. They are running towards the, the border. These people called the people at the border. Our cows have been taken. Put barricades. When the Maasai preacher, the, the, the Maasai preacher now was saying, so ahead, torches and all that, that is the time they left the tails of the cows and began to enter into the bushes. He found barbed wires and thorns. They went with them through. Flesh remained at the 
Babduias, and they entered into tea plantation and hid themselves. They could not be caught. How many people have been hearing this week? We, we, but they are still holding at the tails of the cow. Mr. Preacher, we've had it, but one more night with frogs. And around 4 a.m., they began to walk towards the, the field where masses and kisses fight. People were waiting for them. Here they are. They began to run. They were around four or five. A spear was thrown. One of them was hit down the head gone. Another one, a spear, I mean, uh, a spear was thrown and it hit this leg and stuck on the other leg. He could not run. He saw the man fall down and cut the head. As they were shouting, the Masai's came from the other side to rescue them. They only rescued two. After that experience, he said, since God has saved me, I'm going to theology. After three semesters, he came back to greet the friend. Did you stop that habit? No. I still, still. Sin is sweet. Sin is attractive. Hell is colored with flashlights to attract us. Say, I even married. Come and see my wife. Say, I will come on Friday. Because on Sunday, I'm going back to school. No, on Friday, I'm having some business. Let me come on Saturday. No, you just come on Sunday. That night on Saturday, they went to steal. They were caught. They were killed. The man came on Sunday to greet the wife only to meet a burial. He was inviting him for his burial. Something was will happen. The Jesus I'm calling you to is powerful. He has the power to change us, forgive us, and not treat us according to our sins. The people who are specialized in condemning, they cannot give us power. The man, Jesus Christ, who is not specialized in condemning, is telling us today, come my daughter, come my son. Today is a gift from the Lord. Will you receive? That is why it is called present. Will you re reject the present of God? How many together with me are saying, God, I'm tired, just tired, with frogs. Will thou give me power to denounce this frog that I'm protecting, I'm feeding, before it turns into addiction? God give me that power. How many are saying that? Are you serious? Can you stand? I want to make a call. Once again, today is a gift from the Lord. That is why it is called present. No more one night with frogs. The first appeal as I've been making it throughout the week. You have heard the messages. 
One of the way people gave their lives to Jesus Christ, it was through baptism. This is the last call I'm making. If you are not baptized and you're here, are you waiting for something worse to happen? Maybe something worse may happen and you may have no opportunity to say yes to Jesus. I'm not scaring anybody, but that is the reality. If you are here, you are saying, I've never been baptized. Please, Mr. Preacher, as you pray, remember me. Lift up your hand. It is possible that people are baptized. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I don't care which denomination you go to. God bless you. Put your hands down. Second appeal. I was once baptized. I backslid because of the frogs. I've done terrible things. I can be ashamed to speak in public. But today I've realized God is giving me an opportunity. Jesus is not condemning me. Jesus is not criticizing me. He is telling me like that adulterous woman, neither do I condemn you. Go sin no more. You are saying, I want to renew my relationship with Jesus Christ. I was baptized, but I don't even take the Lord's Supper. I don't participate with others in the Passover because of what I'm doing now. And you are saying as you pray, remember me. Lift up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands down. Song number 309. Three or seven, sorry. Choristers, please help me. You can get a mic and help me. by himself or herself. That is why we normally sing Na kila mtu atatoa Habari za ke mwenyewe Mbele za mungu Siku iyo inakuja It's coming, my brothers and sisters. As we sing stanza two and three and four, just if you feel there is something telling you, don't go. That is the devil. Rebuke him in the mighty name of who? Jesus. Sansa tu. Jesus, save me now. Jesus, save 
not easy to come in from here. I have gone through that experience. It is not an easy exercise. But let me tell you, your life will never be the same again. Amen. We will repeat stanza three only. Give your friends your time, your soul, your body, and mind to Jesus Christ. Let them not prevent you from coming to Jesus Christ. This is your prime time. As we sing stanza three, and then I'll pray if there is anybody remaining, come. I don't care which denomination you go to. I've not talked about any denomination. You come. Here I give the off. Here I give my all to thee. We deserve to die, but Lord, you have given us a chance. We have looked at the plagues where it says tomorrow it is in connection with God giving us more time to repent. But we are accustomed with saying tomorrow, one more night with frogs. 
Oh dear Lord, have mercy on us. We have forgotten that tomorrow is not ours. Anything can happen today. Thank you for these who have given their lives unto you. We plead, we ask, we cry. Forgive us for the shameful things that we have done in our lives. Oh dear Lord, have mercy on us. May you put a limit between us and the very things that can cost us heaven, dear Lord. Help us to swallow our pride and confess it to you, dear Lord. Since you do not condemn and criticize us, accept us at the feet of Jesus Christ, dear Lord. These who have come in front, you know how rotten we are, dear Lord. We ask, dear Lord, as you pass around by blessing your children, we plead, we cry, do not pass us by, dear Lord. Give us the power to overcome these addictions. Thank you even for the chance you've given us to be baptized of water, more so of the Holy Spirit. It is not that we are good. We are not even worthy to call upon your name. But thanks for saying that. We call upon you. You will answer and show us great and unsearchable things that we do not know. There are many unanswered things in our lives. Give us the courage to call upon you. And by faith, you will answer and show us. These are students, dear loving Lord, the majority. The rest even who are standing, struggling in class, Lord. Sanctify the faculties of our minds. Make us to be the heads and not the tails. Help us to work hard in class. Even godliness, we need to work harder. That is why you tell us, resist the devil. Flee away from him. Fight a good fight of faith. We need power of the Holy Spirit to be upon us. Thank you because you love us. Thank you because you've done it. May we not go back to frogs. Give us power to renounce them. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. We are pleased as you have come in front. We can, uh, after they have been dismissed, please we go to that corner. I'd like to talk to you and pray for you once more. So you will pick your belongings and go to that side. Yes. The leadership will give us direction. May God bless you, Bernard.